So I liked Wildling a lot. Right from the start, we open up, and there's this little girl, very cute, and she seems to be kept in isolation. Her and her and her dad, um, you don't know if it's her, her biological father, um, who's played by a very famous actor, but in particular in the horror genre, and he kills it. He does a great job, very menacing, when he's telling her this, this bedtime story. And he has this, this creepy, almost whisper voice, reminds me a lot of Michael Douglas's voice, and so creepy the story he tells her about how they have to stay in this room and they can never leave because the wildlings are out there and she's the last she's the last one they haven't gotten and they're and they're after her very scary and i loved it remind me a lot of the movie room where you have people that are living in isolation for whatever reason and the adult will tell these elaborate fantasies to try to to try to um pacify the the kid and make them make them give them a reason for why they're living what's and clearly uh not a particularly good existence and i won't spoil what happens in the movie but suffice it to say the little girl she starts to grow up and eventually she gets out of out of out of this this room that she's that she's been kept in and she starts exploring the world and the casting and the performance of her is fantastic just her eyes she doesn't say a lot um she doesn't she doesn't have a lot to work with but the amount of uh, emotion and depth of feeling she's able to convey with these big bulging eyes that just seem like they contain so much hurt and so much suspicion and she's very suspicious and frightened of this new world but also wonder and that's totally what someone who had been kept in isolation and this very very constrained existence and then all of a sudden was exposed to the big wide world, I thought, of course, they would have these these big bulging eyes and and be so scared and so fearful and so suspicious, but also so so innocent and so so filled with wonder and awe at even the smallest things. Now, I will say, probably the biggest criticism of this movie is that some of the the symbolism and the metaphors that it explores they're not new. And famous example of uh, or famous movie Carrie. You saw how um, Carrie's mother kept her tucked away and seemed to think the world was too dangerous and isolated Carrie a lot. And then when Carrie got her period, it started um, going through puberty, puberty and experiencing sexuality. The combination of the isolation and then this puberty, um, spoiler, it, 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 didn't, it didn't end well. And here we see the same thing. We see her isolation and then her entering the world and this fish out of water. And then you also see her getting her period and these other things. And so you see that this idea of puberty and transformation and change and then teenage sexuality being this destructive force those are some very very common tropes in in the horror genre but i still think the movie handled them really well and was quite good and then the trope of the old blind but wise mountain man who he's the true believer and they're talking around the campfire in hushed tones about about the old legends and the and the old bloodshed but i thought that that was mixed really well with this with this um kind of awkward awkward teenage sexuality we see a great scene where um the the protagonist the 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 young girl she's um watching the stars with this young boy and she leans over and seems to be you think she's trying to kiss him and it's this kind of fumbling attempted at intimacy but really she's smelling him and, and it's just it's so awkward but i think it's so well done some of the things she says she's off to off to the cool kids party and her mom says, where are you going? Or surrogate mother, the person who's acting as, as, as her mother at the moment, says, where are you going? And she's like, oh, to this party. And her mom's kind of like, oh, I don't know if you should go. And she's like, well, come to the party. Don't you want to come to the party? Just the, it's kind of the like shit kids who haven't been raised in, in normal society say they don't, don't understand kind of kind of the stuff that we all take for granted. But there's this kind of charming, charming wholesomeness and innocence in it. And I want to talk a bit about the end. So it is a bit of a spoiler about what kind of movie this is. But honestly, you might have, you might have already guessed that. But nonetheless, stop watching if you don't want anything spoiled. So the very end where he's cutting into, into her stomach... And I just thought it was so interesting that it wasn't soft like flesh, and it wasn't even fur. It was like, it reminded you of a, of a coconut, just the way a coconut is almost wood, but kind of fuzzy wood, and it was such an interesting texture for someone's skin. And I loved how we never really understood quite what a wildling was or what she was turning into. It seemed like, it seemed like she was going to turn into a werewolf at some point, but it seemed more like neanderthal or just kind of a cave caveman wild i guess wildling wild state and i love the shots we get of the mountains and especially this one shot we get where it's a helicopter going and we just see tree after tree after tree after tree and it just gave that idea of wilderness just being infinite and the idea that civilization may be very powerful and dominant now but but wilderness and, and the wild is in some sense more primal more primordial and will will really outlast us and is, is there all around us even even as much as we try to try to build our civilization 
there's always going to be that that wildness that that is so so massive and so powerful it's always going to be there 